Hi, I'm recording a video to show how you can get the Blueprint Keypad UI when you unlock the keypad to talk to a door in your scene. You can run it in 4.91. You have to uh, set it to the Switch Unreal Engine version to 4.9. Um, but we'll stick with 4.83 for now. So we'll create a new project. I'm going to use the third person default project. So um, let's call it doors demo. Wait for it to load. And uh, we need to add our um, blueprint to it. Now, if you're using the uh, where are we? Yeah. If you're using the downloaded one from the marketplace, you can go to Add to Project. But this version is slightly out of date to the one I'm going to be showing now, and Epic is hopefully going to update this for me and for you uh, in short order. So bear with me that the one that I'm demoing with is the later one than what's shown here. Um, hopefully they sort that out with in a short time. Um, so normally you would add it to project and choose the project you want to add it to. I'm not going to do that. Instead I'm going to launch this. Um, make sure it's in 4.8. I think it is. Uh, I'm going to launch it. You can check what version it is when it runs. And I'm going to migrate it into that project. So you've got that option. Uh, you just right click and go migrate. And you choose everything in the migrate, it's OK. And then you find the path to your project, which would be for me um, doors demo, just created just now. And you choose the content folder, right? So there's two ways you can actually shove it into a project. The add way from the marketplace is obviously easier. Um, so since we've done that, we can close this down. And uh, we can go from the launcher, I suppose, and just load up Doors Demo. This is a previous version I did for testing. So Doors Demo. And uh, I also want to add to that um, something to use as a door. So I'm going to use the top-down dungeons because I have it. Uh, you could just use any mesh that you think will slide nicely uh, or you may already have a door. So let's delete this once. And in the sorry, in the marketplace let's add to project and choose doors demo and add. So this is what you would normally do with the keypad as well. Uh, and it just pops in there. You can even have um, your project running. Oh, I've got two open. Uh, you can even have your project running and it shows, shoves it in there. Alright, so we need to create some doors first off. Um, uh, and let's create a wall or whatever. So I'm going to. Whoops. I'm going to drop it in the scene and alt it across. Let's delete some of these things as well. Um, the, the artwork here is probably not the best for what we're demoing because a keypad to open a dungeon door is kind of strange, but um, bear with me. So let's put uh, a roof over that. Swing that over there. That'll do it for now. Um, uh, yeah, let's also put a little kind of trigger uh, for the keypad itself. I'm going to rotate this 90 and shove it just sort of above the ground. See, the player's not very tall actually. Just above the ground and on the wall there, and I'm going to scale it up like so. So, what this is is like the visual representation of some sort of trigger. We're not actually going to use it. You could make it so it presses or glows or whatever. 
Um, but again, a dungeon board doesn't usually have a keypad anyway. Um, so you would probably have some sort of model of a keypad that you would use. Um, let's put that so it's visible there. That'll do. Um, so that's the first step. So I would always have to get a door. So let's choose something to use as a door. Um, I might just go into floors and grab this one here. It's not actually a door, but it'll do. Um, what I'm going to do is make a make a blueprint from this and call it. I'll just put it in the content folder and call it door down uh, blueprint, uh, and then. It's like so. So uh, the trick is, is that this is not that thing. This is just a static mesh. So we do have to add this into the scene and get rid of that one. Now we can scale it uh, to fit our doorway. You could do the scaling and so forth in the blueprint as a construction script or whatever, but it doesn't matter for this. And we could get rid of RT with placement, but that'll do for now. It's kind of filling the space well enough. Um, we need to measure its placement in terms of the Z. So it's at 330, and it's going to go down to... I like to leave it just visible so we can check that it hasn't like gone way down here. Um, but this depends on the design of your door. You might have it swinging on a rotation, you might have it... Um, sliding sideways. So you know it's minus 80 so 330 to minus 80 well that's tricky maths. Um, what is that? Oh god. Uh, frazzle mind. Yeah I thought so. 14. There's a difference of 14 that it goes down and uh, let's try and make it so it's a nice valley. Let's make this 320. And then we can just adjust the roof down a little bit. So then it's a difference of 400 and it's easier to work out later. Anyway, um, we have a... Uh, we know the value we want to shift it, so now we have to actually shift it. And we can do that in the blueprint. So let's go open full blueprint editor, and away we go. I'll just dock this into the scene so I can jump between them. Um, so the door will eventually be triggered by the keypad, but for now we just wanted to make it work at all. So I'm going to create um, begin play uh, reference to the player controller. And then I'm going to enable input for this door. And instead of it hooking to target, we want it to play a controller to play a controller. And self here is the door. So this means we can have inputs and we need to create an input. We'll use the E key. Um, and now we need to make some animation happen. First thing we want is a print string just to see whether the door is. Uh, firing at all. And we can go test that in a level. I'm just going to set it so that when I play, I'm playing in a new editor window and run up to the door. We don't have to run up to the door, we just have to press E. Um, and uh, it's working nice. So let's do the animation part. Now the door is just a static mesh, so we get the static mesh component and we get its world location and then we take this vector here and we're going to break it because we only need to translate it in Z and we're going to set the Z to a variable. We'll call this variable initial door Z. Uh, so for every door that you place in your level you get the first position of it and then what we're going to do is calculate, like, is it more than 400 down from where it started. Um, so we'll create a branch, and the condition for the branch will be greater than uh, float 
greater than foot. Four fifty, uh, four hundred. Will be what we had. That's the height the door descends, and uh, our initial door Z. It's like so. Um, so we've broken the vector here. Um, we're going to subtract from it. Well, the value is really depends on what you want it to be and what, what's good for the size of your door. Let's just make it 10 and we'll promote that to a variable and we'll call that something like door movement increment or door movement step. That's a bit shorter. And we're going to uh, set the world position to this until it's moved down a certain amount. So we're going to set world location spell it correctly uh, it adds that for you there we go. Um, if it doesn't you just hook it up to the one that's there um, then we're going to make a vector out of this value for z and the existing xy value so it doesn't jump to a zero in the world alright um, but this is going to keep happening until the value of the door has gone down 400. So uh, we just add a delay here. So that's the speed of the door related to the distance it's traveled. Um, and we hooked it up like that. Let's make it 0 0.05. I don't know what's good, but it depends on the size of your scene. Um, that's pretty much that. So we can test out whether the door is moving correctly. and. Uh, all we need to do at the moment is press E and it didn't do anything. So there's a reason why that is. Um, the static mesh has to be set to movable. It's a really easy thing to overlook, but when the door doesn't move, it reminds you that oh, that should be moving. So once that's set to movable, it should work just fine. And it didn't. Okay, that's great. Let's try and figure out why. Oh, what I did wrong was I forgot to minus this, and I've got it just greater than 400, so it's incorrect. It should be float minus 400, and that value is that value here, greater than, well, yeah, greater than this guy. And that feeds into the branch. So yeah, is the current Z value greater than the door minus 400? That's just because I'm rushing through this trying to get to the bit that matters. Say so we'll play and E, there we go, the door's going down now and it gets to a certain height. And uh, well, we can't tell if it's still going down or not. Um, I suppose the way to check that would be to just move the floor to here temporarily and save and play press E and just see whether the door keeps going down nope it stops right in the right place so that's covered um, oops, let's put the floor back again um, so we have a moving door now we're not going to trigger the door from the E key um, we're going to trigger it from the keypad completion so we need to add in our keypad actors and so forth. The first thing we need is the trigger for the keypad. And uh, actually not the first thing we need is we need to add keypad blueprint to the scene. There only has to be one of these. And now we can add in uh, as many of these as we need. So uh, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but it kind of has to be overlappable by the player. Um, you can scale that up and so forth if you need to. Um, and it probably needs to have a name that matches the door, and the door probably needs to have a name as well. So for the keypad name, we'll set we'll set scramble off. Don't really need it. Um, call it um, uh, dungeon. Sorry, dungeon. And uh, let's make another one. 
keypad for this door here. I'll just rotate it. You don't have to rotate it because the text at the top there will rotate to face you anyway. Uh, and we'll call this one cellar. Dungeon and cellar. Um, and there uh, we need another door, so we'll just copy and pa paste it. Um, Walk, drag, rotate it 90, and shove it where, where it fits. That will do. Um, so we need to give these guys names as well. So we're just going to edit the, the blueprint and create a variable called door name and make it a string. Now it has to be made editable because we need to expose it in the editor. You can add a tooltip if you like. Um, so what is the name of this door? You could uh, describe it in a way that is understandable for the user who's setting the variable so they know why that is there. You could say it is used to open the door based on the keypad name or something. But that'll do for now. You can see that it shows up here. Um, whoops, it's called Nuvar because I did press enter, I think. Door name. Right, uh, it shows up in the um, editor under default. If you want to, you can uh, go to its properties and des uh, define a category. You call it door. And now when you go into the editor, you'll see that it's under a category called door. Um, so anyway, let's make these match to the uh, to our keypads. So this one will be dungeon, and this one will be... Oh, grab the right guy. Yeah, uh, this one will be... Oh, he's already called seller. Uh, we want the door, sorry. Yeah, the door. Uh, he should be called cellar. So the, the keypad is called cellar, the door is called cellar. So what we'll do is when we touch this guy, it'll send its information to the door with the same name. Okay, so save all. Uh, at the moment, if we run up to them, they pop up a keypad, but it really has no values or anything. So we need to define that. To do that, we go to the keypad data table, and you see that it's set to the values that it comes with. So we're going to just change them. So dungeon, spell it correctly. Set a value that you want. I'm going to set it to two two two, and we're reading this one to be seller, and we'll set this one to one one one. Or the other way around probably makes more sense. Uh, you have to press enter, otherwise it doesn't commit the value. And this guy here we don't really need, so we can just delete him. I like to keep the default one. We could reverse the order of those so that it's going the right way. And save that. So once that is saved, we're now using these values. Um, and we need to start doing some scripting. Um, in our keypad trigger, um, we need to create a new function. Uh, so you go to function and call it. You could just do this in the event graph, but making it a function means you can fire easily. So let's call it find and open door. Um, so how are we going to start this off? If we go get all actors of class and choose door down VP, the one we just created for the door to move, um, we'll get all of them. So we're going to create a for each loop with break and cycle through this looking for actors with the same name. You see that keypad name here is what matches for the keypads uh, in the editor and we're going to match that name with the name of the door 
So we pull out from the door and call it um, door, get door name. So this is a string and this is a name variable, but we can get them to equal each other using automatic con coercion, which is basically adding a name, converting the name to a string. And if they're equal, then we know we have we know the right one to uh, open. Well, what we're going to do is add the promote this to a variable and call it uh, door. It doesn't really matter what we call it here. And I'm just going to set it so that oops, when the function fires, this gets wiped out. Um, so it's set to nothing. So we're only setting door to be explicitly this guy if it's true. And the reason to have this is if we fire off one door and then we go and fire off another one, it doesn't keep that value. Alrighty, there we go. Um, once we get the right door, we break the loop so it doesn't cycle through the rest of that are available. Uh, and then we're going to um, essentially fire an interface event which the door actor will have a reaction to. So we need to create the event, uh, interface event first. Uh, there's an interface already with this project, so you can just add one there. You add the function. Um, I'm going to call it door. Probably door is fine, but we'll call it door open. Um, and that'll do. I'll just compile and save. And then we're going to grab door that we just set and we're going to go is valid. What is valid does is uh, it checks to see whether it's empty or not. Uh, if the value is empty there's no point to send a, a message to it. Right? So we branch that and if it's true then we can call a event on it. Um, now this won't work as we have it now because the door doesn't really know about the interface that we're going to use. So let's jump to our door and go to its class settings and add the keypad interface. The keypad interface is holding that door open event. Um, well, all this needs to be compiled and saved. So. And then into the keypad trigger we go. So now that um, the door has the interface added to it and its settings, we can call door open. Uh, so there's two functions here. This call function door open. You see it's set to door down because we pulled it off of this guy. Right. This uh, keypad trigger also has uh, the door open. And you see it's set to self. Uh, you don't really want to use this one. Right. What you can do uh, also is go door open and use the interface call. This is the one that I use. This has got a yellow dot. I think in previous versions it had a little uh, envelope above it, which is kind of nice. It lets you know that this is going out of this blueprint to another one. So I'm going to use that one because I know that it works. And uh, to recap, we cycle through all the doors looking for the name of the door it matches this keypad. If it does, we set that door variable. If the door variable is not empty and it's uh, obviously matching the right one, then we fire off the event. Okay, so uh, back in our door, instead of using E to open the door, we can go event door open. Uh, you'll notice it has the little symbol above it to let you know that this has been fired by another blueprint, and we fire that instead. We could keep the E there, but that's not what we want to happen, so we'll get rid of it. So now we have to trust that when we activate the keypad, it's going to uh, do the right thing. There's probably a few other things we need to do. We created uh, find an open door as a function to find a door open, but it has never been called. So we need to figure out where to put that. Um, with this particular um, 
scripting. I think we have to add two times, but let's see what we can do. Um, we need to look for access granted. Um, it might really be a good idea to make this uh, stronger color to stand out because it is quite a. It's like the it's like the end game or the term, terminal function for all of this, um, and we want it to be kind of noticeable. So what we do, uh, what happens in this is we. We, we add the words open to the name of the terminal or the, or the keypad so where the where it says dungeon or whatever it'll say open dungeon or open cellar um, to know to let you know that it's happened before um, and then we take away the well we add the access granted widget for like one second and then we take it away uh, so that you know that that's been opened or not. So now what we want to do is fire off find an open door, like that. And that contains all of the goodness we've put here. So let's see what we have. I'm skeptical of this will work straight away because I'm bound to have um, forgotten to do something. Uh, let's go play. Oh, uh, there's a couple of things we need to check. For each terminal, there's a... Uh, where are we? Grab a terminal. Right. Um, there's a scramble and an allow user pin. If you have allow user pin on, it's like a feature I've added to the newer version. It lets you, once you've opened the door the first time, it lets you add your own pin, uh, like as if you were resetting a safe pin code. Uh, in this case, we don't really need it. Um, and we don't really need to scramble. So those are both off for both of these doors. Right? Dungeon and cellar. And this is cellar. This is dungeon. So let's see what we've got. Uh, a quick thing to note, uh, very important for the testing this out, is that in your project you will have save games probably. This hasn't been run yet, so it doesn't, but we'll have to keep this up because for testing we may need to clear the saves for every time we make a change. Okay, moving on, uh, we need to see whether our keypad works. I forget whether it's ones or twos, but let's try. Okay, this might be 2222. Two, two, two. Oh, so what is it? Um, that is strange. Uh, let's try this guy. Oh, so something hasn't updated correctly. Um, let's go back to our. Oops. Close that. Minimize that. Let's go back to our uh, keypad data and see what we got. Um, this is set to scramble, which probably want to be off. And uh, that one's not. So dungeon is one one one. Um, play. I'll oh, save all first. Eh? Don't think there's anything else we need to change here. This is our keypad actor, without which none of these guys would talk to each other. Um, let's edit him. Just a quick look. Uh, yeah, should be a problem. Uh, just note that now that we've run it, we should have a save game. Are we in the right? folder. Hmm. This is doors demo. Okay, this is the wrong folder. So let's go to the right folder and look for doors demo and save. You'll see that there's a save for the file here. Since I just changed some parameters in the data table, that would be invalidated here. So let's try running that again. Um, it says cellar, although it's going through the wall because it's trying to face towards us. Um, I don't remember if it's 222. So there's our access granted, but the door has not gone down. And then this guy 1111. But the door has not gone down. So we need to check. I'll debug what's going on there. First off, um, 
Let's put in keypad trigger, uh, a break mode for when this fires. There's not much point to. Um, there's not much point to create all this if we don't know that it ever gets executed. And I think what's happening is uh, the first time you do it, we need to kind of set another uh, case to fire that off. I think it will go. Down. But you'll notice that, oh, okay, fire and open door worked that time. Let's see. Get a light as of class. Let's skip this through the macro. Uh, do the door names equal each other? That was a false, otherwise it would have shown the true step. Let's do the next door now. And it's just saying that they don't match at all. See that the um, the loop didn't actually detect any doors, so we need to go and see why. Um, there's an additional place where we need to fire off our, uh, our uh, find an open door event, and that is in the keypad UI. Uh, I think. Pad widget. Um, it has a user pressed OK event, and you can see that it sets open the door, which is in the keypad actor. Oh, oh anyway, it, it fires off set open oh, in the trigger, sorry. Uh, so it looks up the trigger that's relevant and it goes set open. So if you go back to the trigger and find set open, if it fires off set open, you'll see there's nothing here to tell it to, um, to access granted at all. So there's two things we could do. We could set the find an open door down here, or we could set access granted to be fired by this. But you'll see that there's set open there, that will create a loop. So probably the best thing to do would just be to double this up. Or uh, the third thing we can do, which is probably the best thing to do, uh, the third thing we could do is in the widget, rather than say set open, we could fire off uh, access granted, which is probably better for what we want. I'm going to leave them both there for now. And unhook that one. Um, so, so we're going with the widget firing access granted in order to make the door move down. Um, it'll say access granted and then it will do that one. So hopefully this will work now. Um, see all. Play. Let's see what we get. Uh, no, they're set to open. At least this one is. So we'll go over here. This one hasn't been uh, touched yet. And it was one one one, and it's firing off uh, the break the break point for opening the door. Let's just go resume, and there's the door going down. Okay, so that's what we wanted to work. Just to recap, um, you'll have to go into your keypad widget and find the use user entered the correct code section, and uh, you could do this a couple of ways. But probably the easiest way is to pull off trigger and add access granted widget because that will fire this one off anyway, so you don't really need it there, and it will also add access granted, okay? Um, that'll take away the existing numeric keypad, that'll just go away. Um, the other case that we set up the first time, which wasn't firing, was because uh, when you start the game, uh, this guy's already been opened, you don't get the keypad, it just will open the door. So this one also uh, needs to fire the door opening. It's not at the moment. Right? Uh, that one does. And you know, the door should come down as well. So we're not quite all the way there yet. If we just clear the save data, you'll see that 
Um, both doors are reset, and when we go to here, into the right code, the door goes down. There's a little bit of delay there, but it's okay. And then this one is one, 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 one. And there's a break point, and then the door goes down. So now our problem is really to make this happen after the game gets restarted and the doors have already been opened. Right? Uh, now, the door is firing its animation again, but it's already at the lowest point that it can go to, so essentially it'll do nothing. Right? Um, let's close the game and load it up. You'll see that the doors have already been set and it has been saved. Right? Um, so now when they play, they should animate down, right? but they ain't, so we need to make it so that they do. Okay, um, this is mostly a matter of fussing around with the, the, the correct um, functions in the right place. Okay, the answer to this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a kind of easy mistake to make. If you've um, removed a, a widget and then you fire a function after it, sometimes you get some strange situations happening. So what I'm going to do is just shift the find an open door to just before that all happens so that we remove the widget last. This also means the door will fire quicker when it starts to open so there won't be a delay first. Okay, um, So let's see whether that works. We're in the game, we've already opened the the keypads uh, in a previous session, so they should just fire immediately. And there's a break point to see has the keypad been completed before? Yes, is there a user pin? Hopefully it goes false. This is uh, a macro that's just running through. Skip, skip, skip. Um, so yeah, it fired through false. The do once was what we just saw flip through the macro. And then add access granted widget. This pops us to here and we're adding to the viewport the UI for access granted. Uh, it's just doing this thing there. Plays a sound. And then we set open, which is down here. Uh, it's just adding some text in front of the keypad to let you know that you've opened it already. And then we find an open door, which is what we want. So we can go resume, and you see the door comes down. So that was kind of a uh, fairly straightforward, but this was just in the wrong order. Um, it's kind of intuitive that you would add that on the very end of what's already there, but this fire is much nicer. So let's just delete the save game and play all that from start. We'll delete our debug points or breakpoints and we'll go play. Everything's in a fresh state. The keypad pin for this guy is 1 1 1, or is it 2 2 2? No, it's 2 2 2. Or four twos, and then the door opens. Okay, and then we can go to the second door. That's one, one, one. Then the door opens straight away. This has already been fired, so the door is actually firing its animation again, but you don't notice it because it's already at its lowest height, so it just uh, cancels straight away. And if we close the game, load it again, uh, the doors have already been opened. So they just get triggered as soon as you run into them, which is kind of what we want. Okay, there's more. Uh, the current version that's not yet available on the marketplace, but yeah, hopefully they'll update it soon, is that you can set for each terminal that it uses a user pin. If you do, then I'll just delete the save game. Uh, when you play, the uh, when you complete it, uh, it will let you set a pin code, so you can choose your own one. So let's just choose one, two, three, four, and uh, fine. Uh, you could make it so the door closes again after you set it, but that's just adding more animation functions. Um, so now we'll quit the game and could play and run into this here and it should say you need to enter a new pin because uh, although you've completed it you set a pin on it and now it needs that so if you put in the original pin it doesn't work and you have to enter the new one which is one two three four and now it works just nicely 
So that's kind of what we can do now. If you want to add the door going back up again after a certain time, it's just a matter of adding a function for it in your door and then executing it. Uh, something like this, but backwards, uh, with addition to the values and so forth, um, until you get back to the initial door Z and firing it off at the appropriate um, place. So that's all. Um, hopefully that clears up some things on how to use this. So good luck and let me know if you have any troubles.